evening. Good evening and welcome to the Village of Mariner Board of Trustees uh, budget work session. Uh, tonight we'll, we'll be talking about the, uh, the uh, planning department, the, uh, the uh, building department. Uh, but before we do that, we are going to go into executive session uh, to discuss uh, 501, 105-1D of the Public Offices Law to discuss the employment history of people or persons in the, uh, uh, in the uh, building department. So I need a motion. So mm -hmm. moved. Second. Uh, Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So we're gonna we're gonna head out into the executive session room, and we will be back anon. 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 You might be the only one who got that. <laughs> I, I, I do my I do my uh, New York Times profile. <laughs> All right, so you see, it could be well tomorrow. So, just so you know, since you asked, um, make your rest of the household. Uh, All right, thank you, buddy. We got Jerry back. Uh, no, just sit down, sit down, sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. No, I understand. Cherry, <laughs> <laughs> hey, how are you? Good. Uh, we are putting on a bread and we will start. Thank you. 
How are you doing? Well, that's okay. That's okay. Thanks, Bill. Yep. I'll be on the lookout for that. Yep. Good. It's good. Um, no, no, I'm good. I'm just uh, there. Uh, I have a, uh, I'm in a meeting. Well, uh, they're in an executive session right now about a personnel issue I may need to be a hearing officer for. So I'm, I stepped out. So, uh, so I just I don't want to be too loud. So, um, nothing exciting. Uh, yeah, well, I actually did actually something interesting. The uh, we're getting a donation of a. Uh, New canine to the police department. And the place is about five minutes from where you live. Yeah, uh, it's in uh, about Southeast Guide Dogs or Southeastern Guide Dogs. Basically, one exit north of you on 75. Yeah.
Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I, I looked at it all like maybe a ten, literally a, a ten minute drive. Maybe a bit, a bit. No, it's a camera. It's you know basically it's trained as a, a dog, but it, yeah, it's not. They can retrain it. Or yes, I didn't make twenty hundreds of dollars off the country. So. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what they need to, you know, you got to send down two officers to pick it up. So I said, hey, here, one quick meal, just drop it in my mother's place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So I, I, I don't know if they're driving down or flying down or what, or flying down and driving up. I, I imagine they, they, they might need to. Drive the dog. Yeah. Is that uh, Abby calling for you? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, well, they'll, they'll investigate and they'll find out. Yeah. 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 I think it's probably going to be combo, like combination of Milligan County and the control may come in and have to, if there's any sort of administrative no reason. Yeah. They're going to they're gonna speak to our board next week. So we'll see. Well, the only thing they no, they yeah, the law is law. Well, it will, it will get figured out somehow. But that's all, all I can really say is it'll get figured out. And then they'll come here next week and we'll see. Yep. No, no, no. Oh, there's a, like a quasi theta. Yep. It's going to last seven hours. It's even longer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll ask him again. Okay. 
Let's see, you double paid something. No. No. That's good. That's good. That's good. Well, I try to, you know, try to keep it uh, pretty simple. Yeah. It's the heat. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I think the next thing <laughs> next thing, <laughs> next thing is just the uh uh this one the stats. Yeah. Also, oh, there's no uh, verbal warning. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have, I have a, a form that we use, which is basically says, you know, first verbal warning, second verbal warning, written warning. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I'm just gonna call this where this meeting starts. So okay. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Yeah. Uh, you can sit here and spend there and come up what's your turn. Yeah. Um, did you, your PowerPoint? Yeah. Do you have it on a, yeah, oh, you have any copies yet? What's that? How many, do you have a copy of them or? Oh, no, I uh, oh, should, should I? Well, do you have any, can you, so you getting it out to uh, Augie? Yeah, it's all the it on that. Oh, no, no, I, I said the Augie. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I sent it to uh I sent it to Sally, Augie, and Warren to hear the seven. Okay. 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 Okay.
Oh, does this actually get the point where you make it displayed on? Uh, yeah, it's displayed on, on TV. Huh? Yeah, we can share the screen. Oh, okay. So people watching on Zoom will see it. Good. Uh, right. And with the camera, we'll just focus on the screen. Okay, good. Yeah, that's an executive session. That's the first one I have. So, I excuse myself because I may need to be hearing officer that uh, makes the final decision. So, I don't, I don't want any sort of. Uh, <laughs> I am. Yes. Good. 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 Uh, oh, find it. Well, my phone, yeah. Just want to try to dial it, see what happens. Living in an apartment on the wall is much better than a house. Uh, yeah, especially if you're fine. Yes, yeah. yeah. Thank 
So the TV can pick you up. What? The bottom one? No. The lavaliers are what I like to have in these. Yeah, well, she Yep. Some water here or some green rigs. Yeah, uh, I think it's easier, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, as far as we did the uh, camera system and the audio system and lighting uh, in the uh, uh, in the courtroom. And like a lot of that, I by the TV for the operation. operation. Words for Channel Four. Yeah, that's that's what it was. Getting close to place. The last time that was the sandwich today. Yeah. 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 It was a lot of it. Yeah, it's always getting written in the middle. Yeah, no, I can't wear contacts anymore. It won't work. Stay with me. Because I, the thing about contacts is, what it be is that I can never be able to use the word. Oh, the prescription is not in sizes. Really? Yeah. Oh, I think it's out. I'm far sighted and I'm not sure. So they really, they can't get it's anything fire. Yeah. And that was in the close right now. It's good. 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 It's we do, do they solve it? Oh, no, 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 I have this uh, condition where it's like a mucus blow up in the eye. So after a couple months, the contacts would be at this yellow color. And I love to draw one. Yeah, but those were. Everybody's looking at me and I'm like, hey. But they were three years old. I'm sorry. But oh, it was horrible. Yeah. I was embarrassed. Yeah. Were they wanted to leave? I couldn't even They weren't. I did. Oh, I did. Yeah. And the day to day, they didn't have a question. They couldn't. No, there was no proposal. 
But that was the weirdest sensation. It's just me. That's why I try not to like look anymore. I didn't want to. If you Я уже понял, что не было большого прошлого. Uh, 
Yeah. 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 Are all, I have a question. Are all the things we have here, are those the ones that are in the front there? These, these, yeah. these right? yeah. 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 Shut off the same, But it's in our binder, too. Oh, yeah. That's perfect. Yeah, I have my binder. I just want to make sure I'm on. Uh, Good. I'm cold. That room was very warm. Was that your scarf that was out there? It was. <laughs> no, but no, I didn't take it either. <laughs> they live in interesting times. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye, Daniel. Bye. Here's I'm wondering will that save us money? I'll save us money. <laughs> Water here, I'm gonna oh see it. screwed. Somebody's pranking you for mine. <laughs> Up today in my mother's auto insurance. Uh, so a 90 year old woman is driving around. Oh, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Resume. 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 Glad we didn't find out about this the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Lel, I'm see you on. Thank you, my friend. What did you was it? Yeah. Oh, sorry. She's just marriage. <laughs> he's still dinner, he still dinner. <laughs> I said somebody left us. <laughs> you must have been something as a kid. <laughs> it, was, it was, you know, it was water. I didn't think it was, but I. It's all right. It's all right. I got tea. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I'll bring next time. I'll bring an extra one for you. <laughs> All right, uh, Augie, what page are we working from here? Well, who are you taking first, engineer? Well, Jerry, who are you taking first, engineering or build, uh, building? Who's smaller and tougher? <laughs> okay, Carolina goes first. <laughs> That's a trick question. <laughs> so we're going to be we're going to be talking about the building department's budget first. Augie, what page am I starting on? We can give out a hand handout so you don't have to. Do oh, it. boy. Great. So, Jerry, you want to introduce this or? Sure, Mayor. So, uh, Carolina um, has prepared, as well as Gino, but Carolina has prepared a PowerPoint. Thanks, Joe. Prepared a PowerPoint slide uh, presentation for, um, uh, for the Board of Trustees uh, that she will go into now. Uh, slide by slide um, and talk about some of the changes in her budget um, as well as um, as as we discussed uh, last week that uh, department heads will discuss revenue uh, increases in their budget and I'll step in because I have two new department heads in front of you I'll step in when I can okay. you can start Carolina whenever you want It's over here. Good evening, here. Good evening, Board of Trustees, Augie, Jerry, everybody, and the members of the building department present here today. Thank you for the opportunity to be here with the budget meeting presentation. Um, Madam Wilkie, 
have a little bit of my background. I shared my resume with you here and the board. Uh, I've been in the U.S. for over 17 years. I'm an American citizen, and I have the pleasure now to work with the village of Mimaranek. My background, I graduated as an architect and urban planner in Brazil and was able to work with the government uh, service here since early 2016 with the city of Mount Vernon and the village of Mimaranek. And it was magical when I had the interview here with the village uh, that I had the department using the leader, a new leader. And Jerry and Ben Sarnoff we were present there. It was very special. So thank you for welcoming me to the village. Um, so now let's move to our budget. Our page number 10 shows our expenses for both planning and the line items we have to go planning and beauty department. So those are the main lines we are discussing tonight. We can move to the next page, please, Aubrey. I believe if you just push in through, it should be perfect. So in blue, I decided to highlight to make it easier for all of us tonight what the actual 2023 budget looks like. So as you can see, under this line items, we don't have any shoes. So I have a green check mark there for us. The next page, we do have line item 1600415. And the next one, utilities electric. Don't have much control on that except again, it's in our building. But it did increase a little bit, but it's still under control. As you can see, it's still less than the adjusted budget for 2023. That's why it has the green check mark. On the next page, we have living service, which is pretty close to the adjusted 2023 budget, but it's still under control, even though we went up from the previous year. On the next page, we have the salaries and we have a few question marks there. And maybe Jerry, would you like to expand on that one? Uh, sure. So, so our assistant building inspector, uh, Jay Contini, uh, he, he makes um, 75,000 a year. The adopted 2023 budget of 76,875 was for the individual who he replaced. So um, that salary line is correct. We checked it earlier today. Um, Karen Johnson, her salary was adjusted uh, to reflect the office assistant. And then um, we have code enforcement, part-time Frank Pavlaki. Um, the previous part-timer was uh, a part-timer with uh, very little experience, not as much experience as Frank. Uh, Frank is working with us for 18 and a half hours a week, um, year round, and his salary is correct on the right hand side of that slide. Thank you, Jerry. And these employees that are here today have been working really hard to get us to the revenue numbers that we have, especially uh, Karen and Rebecca are seeing an amazing amount of increase in things that we are processing through the front desk. Uh, James jumped in to help me with the, as an assistant building inspector. Uh, the amount of things they were reviewing is incredible. And Woodrina is directly assisting the planning department with a nonstop dedication. Woodrina, thank you all for being here. So our next page, uh, we have one line item with a check mark is still, which is the step over time. As you, you can see, we are still under the adjusted 2023 budget. However, if there is an increase of 40%, we're trying to control that with the level of organization that we have to do in this past four months did require a lot more work from our staff, including our oil officer, for example, Matthew Gonsard. He had to stay extra hours trying to clean up all of the files that were all over the place in the department or other uh, items that needed to be done in a timely manner. 
The next is miscellaneous equipment is still under control, although there was an increase, and then equipment and capital outlay and the various building department forms. There was an increase as well, but it's still under control. On the next page, we do have the various mailings. We have that under control as well. We adopted was 2,000, was still 963. And that even including the adoption now that we have of send, sending out only certified mails to um, port appearance ticket or other mandatory presence documents. Um, professional publications all under control. That's why you see the check mark in all of those line items, including repairs, maintenance for staff cars. On the next page, we have supplies. There was a decline on that, and I think we can um, award that to our summer intern, Mia, who helped us organize our supply closet, <laughs> which is a dedicated space now locked in our corridor. We know exactly how much we have, so we have to order less supplies. Carolina, can I say something real quick? Absolutely. So for the mayor and board, um, as you can see, different people come to us with different ideas. And uh, what's great about this presentation right now is not only is the department head showing you the 2024 requested and tentative numbers, but is also looking at our current state of 2023, of which we have, you know, um, just a little under two months left. And um, it just... I wanna demonstrate and thank Carolina for keeping an eye on everything, even while we're trying to do what we're doing in the building department and prepare for a new budget and a new budget season, our department head is still looking at the current costs and to make sure that we come in on budget, um, which is um, something that I believe I'm going to um, ask. It's something that we do, the trio does, Dan, uh, Augie and I all the time, but uh, it seems to be it seems to be spreading into our department heads, and I just wanted to point that out and tell everyone that I'm very happy that um, it happened naturally and organically. Carolina, we didn't even we didn't even um, tell you to do it this way, so I really appreciate that presentation aspect. Thank you, thank you so much. Appreciate it, Jerry. Um, Let's go now to building department software. That looks like a big number and we went through earlier today. As you can see, we are talking about um, a total of 40,000. It's still under control because that's total and enough to do a few different breakdowns. And maybe Augie and Laura can provide more details on those. On the next page, we move then to planning department which is out on the line uh, 8020 under the expenses. We have it under control, as you can see, for the salaries. However, there will be an increase, as you see on the various tentative stage, because we are adding a line item for the director of planning. Also, we have on the second box, the we thing we see part time, Regina, that was an addition as well. She became uh, instead of a consultant. And then we have staff overtime, which was another line item with an increase, but due to the need through different board presences. So that's why we have that increase. Office furniture, you're going to see we have a 60% increase. We still have it under control. However, we needed to buy more um, file cabinets for the planning department for organization of different received huge documents. So that's why you see that increase. And on the next page, there was another increase, which is about 30%. Uh, and again, these are items that we had to bring over for a variety of reasons, either for staff accommodation or sit down uh, stations or different printing systems. And then below, you can see we have all of these different subscriptions, um, American Planning Association, New York Planning Federation, et cetera. And this is saying zero because, again, most of these were connected directly to the director of planning. And since we didn't have one, one of these were actually used. And on the next page, 
we have supplies for planning and if that is under control, even though we didn't finish the fiscal year, we still got some money left there. And then consultant is a big number, but there is a drop. As you can see, 48% drop. So in general, this grant total poses a huge impact, 88%, but that's because we were adding a full-time employee with a, a salary and a line item. So when we move, any questions so far? So please feel free to interrupt me anytime. All right, so moving through planning and really important revenues. Those are the line items that we have in our revenue accounts. In the next page, now where we see some good improvements. And again, the part of that is the big pile that I receive every day from Karen for signatures. My desk it looks like uh, the Bible, <laughs> mm -hmm. but it's actually items that were processed and they are ready for signature and review first. So under building the park on miscellaneous things, if we go to our rectangle that is in pink, you're gonna see in 2021, we collected about 7,500. In 2022, about 12,000. And then our adjusted 2023 budget for 25,000. And two now, which we still have two months to finish the fiscal year, we are at 44,000, which is an increase of 180% of what we had before. We didn't do anything differently other than going through our fee schedule, understanding what a permit entails, cross-referencing all the, the trades. It was a lot of understanding, especially for the staff that are processing that, but that made us have this huge improvement of 180% in our revenue. And then if we keep scrolling down, in this list, you're going to see on, on the next page, we have zoning board fees and planning board fees. That is something that still needs to be seen. Jerry, would you like to expand that? So, so we know that the process for zoning and planning board fees is slightly different than the other fees that um, staff looks at, recommends, and asks the board of trustees um, to consider. Um, and so what we did was we somewhat, we left it, of course, flat because uh, we do have um, some new processes that we want to try to work through uh, with Mr. Spolzino already talking to the board about um, certain um, certain ways that the, the, the boards function. So, so we left that flat. Um, we're not that far off as far as our targets. We are a little off on zoning board fees, uh, but on planning board fees, we're right on target. Actually, we'll exceed um, this year. That's the reason why we left that flat. It's not not, not much as far as uh, um, we just, we may come, we will come back. Not we may, we will come back to that next year with some new revisions and some new uh, thoughts that we can share with the board. And then the fees and charges schedule. That's going to be on the board's agenda for Monday the 10th. Mm -hmm. uh, there are proposals to amend how we're charging fees right now. Instead of the type of application, it's going to be also tied to the spread of the application. The range. The range. All right. Let's go to the next page, please, Audrey. Next page is an exciting page. Next page, we start with the building permits. And you can see back in 2021, 725,000 about that. 2022, we collected 851. And now, even though our adjusted 2023 budget was 300,000, to now we are in 914,000, which is pretty close to the 950 we have requested for 2024, we still got two more months to go. Mm -hmm. And that was a 50% increase from last year. And then rental inspection fee, you're gonna see all the zeros, but that's because it's a new, um, 
introduction that we're going to have at some point. Uh, it's the tentative budget for that is 150. Jerry, would you like to talk about it now or later? Oh, uh, so so we'll we'll talk about that later. But uh, the rental inspection fees, I've spoken to the board about that. We've added it to the fee schedule for their consideration. It would be seventy five dollars per inspection. Um, it protects not only the village, but it protects the tenant and well as well as protects the landlord. Um, it's not an exorbitant fee. It's a it's a new process that we would need to introduce, uh, and it would be an annual inspection to make sure that. Um, Properties are livable, habitable, and safe. Perfect. So the next one, street permit, street opening permits. That is, even though it's here, I guess it's being done through James Barney. Am I correct? Yeah, it's done by him. All right. So yeah. that's under TPW. Next, electric permits. And as you can see, electric permits, we have our just in 2023. Was fifty five thousand right now? We are at eighty one tax already, which is even more than our adopted and requested stage for two thousand twenty four. Eighty one percent increase, and I believe that's thanks to staff is understanding a little bit better what each scope of work entails, and when we have to call the applicant and say, "Look, this scope of work, you actually need a licensed electrician." licensed electrician needs to come over and apply for this project and then you need to provide us a certification letter that the work was done as for code so all of that improvement is actually shown in, in our numbers uh, next we have sidewalk cafe permits and that is a new number just like the rental inspection fee and under permits order and we're gonna go through it in a few next pages we have a 15% increase as well. And again, our budget was 95,000 and we are already at 112,000. Then we have the license. As you can see, the group total here is already giving us a 70, about 70% 70 increase. Let me, let, me give you, let me give you, if I could, Carolina, a little explanation on permit other and the fact that it's, requested at 150 but i brought it down to 110 that was in consultation with this with the uh, finance staff because we broke out certain um certain permits so for instance the twenty thousand from sidewalk cafe uh was in permit other um and so we're looking at this here permit other um and so we feel uh that 110 is a very very conservative number so that number is actually um 130 thousand because Sidewalk Cafe was in permit other. Uh, Sidewalk Cafe, by the way, does not include the parking spot uh, cafe revenue. That's anticipated to be about 50,000 or a little bit more than 50,000. And that uh, we will discuss when we talk about parking fees and parking revenue, I'm sorry. Thank you, Jerry. So just to finalize this page, as you can see, we are already about 200,000 more than our 2023 adjusted budget. And chances are that we're gonna be close to 300 to 400,000 more in revenue. Next page, we have an explanation from Laura on what building miscellaneous actually mean. And she said the majority of that is the certificate of completion or certificate of occupancy fees, sanitary sewer fees, tree removal, permit renewal, closing or extensions, and copies of documents. And then under other permits, the majority is plumbing permit, which right now we didn't have a line item for that. So it's being added as other permits. Uh, and also the sign application fees. Next page. Thank you, Olgi. Am I going too fast? My pleasure. Is it going well? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the next one, fee schedule. That is uh, places where we are anticipating possibly other rev uh, venues for revenue. And this is under our fee schedule, A347, in our code of ordinances. Chapter 100, for example, is antennas. And 
part of our staff is here today and they were telling me they never heard about any of that. Am I right? So they never heard that we had to charge specifically for antennas. So one of the first things that we've done is going through the fee schedule said, okay, so when we have Verizon, at and or whoever comes here, let's go through it together and understand how we should charge these specific fees. Next, next one, as a good example, is chapter 120 for blessing or keeping. And that Gino, who is right here next to me, has been consulting with me on that every now and then. We have applicants coming over with all sorts of rock removal. Um, and actually, Dan helped them one as well, right, Dan? They come in with all sorts of technologies and they ask him, but is that rock removal? I say, yes, it still applies as per our code definition. And I wish Bob was here because he was helping us interpreting all of these definitions and code sections. So our staff would be able to charge, and that's how much our law causes us to enforce per day. It's almost $2,700 per day. Back to 182 on the next page, it's about fire prevention. And I was told that up to now, nobody was charging any of this. Am I correct? So our staff was here today, Karen and Rebecca, they directly process receipts, payments. They never collected since they started any of these fees. And those are annual inspections. This is very important. Not for the payment, of course, the payment is part of the revenue, but that is an indication that we're doing something that is proposed and it's ensuring safety for the community, especially fire prevention which is chapter 182. Next page, we have chapter 226 under housing standards. For every rooming house per unit, we should be charging $25. And it came to my attention that we never charged any of that either. Same goes to chapter 234 for laundries and dry cleaning. It's a $50 fee per Point operated laundry or dry cleaning per machine. Again, it came to my attention that we never charged any of that, and that would be part of our code enforcement team. So, I mean to inspect those on an annual basis? Absolutely. That's an annual inspection. Uh, and, and the code describes more how those inspections should be done. And this is just the fee schedule that gives us uh, the last time I think was, if I'm not mistaken, January 25th, 2021. That was the latest amendment on the fee schedule. And then we have chapter 246 for motels, which I believe we are doing, but I'm not clear on how we are charging those because our front desk team who's handling receipts, they didn't inform me, inform me of any of those process. Correct? Ready. Thank you. And again, for signs, Size, there is ecosystem in between what we have in our website as how we charge and there is even a fee of $25 per sign and I can't find there anywhere in the code. And what we have is what is on the fee schedule. And on the next page, under chapter 342 for zoning, we do have the third highlighted item it says sign variance and appeal applications. So that you would only know that you require a variance for your sign if we do a review. When it goes in front of the Board of Architecture Review, they most likely won't know if that sign, if that awning does require a variance from our local board or board emissions. And if it does, we would indicate and we should be charging a $225 fee for that variance, which right now we don't charge because there's no review. And the variance is given by the zoning board, not by the BAR. Given by Exactly. Well, it depends on what it says on the book. It might be the Board of Architecture Review to grant that variance. I will need to check. I'm not the person sure. It depends on how the code says. Thanks. Uh, sure. And then fence permit application, I believe right now we're not charging that fee, which is specifically 150. We're charging it as a building permit application under the estimated market value. Of that fee, but there is a specific fee for fence 
Uh, so that's why we still under zone and that's in blue for a specific reason. That's part of what Dan was talking about. If you see our fee schedule is already saying that it should be for the square footage of a non-residential space. So we should be charging uh, this $150 and then for commercial industrial it says 400 25 and special permit varies 125 for the expansion. And again, wireless and telecommunication facilities, we started doing that immediately. Um, I believe Karen and Rebecca already processed at least three of those in the past four months. Am I accurate on that assessment? About three, three wireless telecommunication facilities. And we reviewed together, right, change. So it was a little bit of process and Bob was here, Gino helped me as well. We were trying to understand which ones were co-location, notification, and then Dan also helped us. We were trying to understand which ones were on village property and what our um, leasing, leasing agreements, right? They had all of this piece dictated by them. And then we have the very last page where I say thank you everybody <laughs> for listening to all of my comments today. Um, but before I finish that, there is the Harbor Coast. So I guess we can pass for the next page, please, Augie. What happens is that right now we have a few wind use boards and Harbor Coastal is the only board where we charge zero dollars for all of the work we have, which is receiving permits reviewing the applications and also be present during the meetings or sending back for review, receiving it back. So our recommendation is to establish some sort of fee for that work that currently right now is being done without any kind of permit fee. And with that, I would like to- So would that be an application fee? Yes, no fees at all in charge. But does anybody apply to HCZM directly or is it as a result of a, a, some other kind of a building permit? They apply through a uh, permit. I'm not exactly sure how it is, but I believe it's a building permit. But when they check Harbor Coastal, then that's it. There's nothing. There is currently, there is an inconsistency between what we have on our website, what we have printed, and that's part of a big project. Jerry already, already indicated that when we do it, we have to do it. We have to do it for all sorts of permits that we have, with uh, adjustments on suggestions on how to follow all of those processes. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think uh, permit permits go directly to Harbor Coastal. I have to check. What has, what does? Um, yeah, I think you're right. Permit perimeter permits. Yeah. Yeah. So but there, there, are, there are there are perimeter permits which do go directly to Harbor Coastal. Other applications are the result of, you know, filing the building permit and then going through the through the application in the Florida But even a perimeter permit would be filed with the building department first. Well, so everything gets filed with the building department first. Right. But, you know. Not necessarily, Dan. I'm sorry to interrupt no. on that. It should be like that. And that goes back to the building department as the gatekeeper of mm -hmm. the application. So we have full control what meets each one of the land use boards. And I know we were backed up. Mm -hmm. uh, the backlog was huge, and I am pleased to announce that we killed the backlog. Good. We were able Thank to you. review Thank you. everything. Yes. 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 Jerry, I counted the hours. I worked about 23 days more than my four months here. So I worked actually five day, five months in four months. Mm. <laughs> you did five months in four months? Mm -hmm. I did. Hopefully, I only paid you for four months. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, no comp time, no overtime either. <laughs> but I guess that helped us kill the backlog because there was simply no way. Uh, my, my staff was here today. They were asking me every day to go home. Every day when James leaves, they go home. Carolina saying with Rebecca and Karen and Rodrina say, you got to go home, you got to rest. So we got to help each other here because there's no way we can work in a way where people call every day and say, yeah, you guys have a six months backlog, so I decided to do work without a permit. <laughs> Believe me, we've yeah. heard that a few times. People were just choosing to start the work because they were told they were going to wait six months. 
But we're not seeing any of that anymore. We caught up. I heard um, B not collected a lot during the presentation here. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, how, how, what's it? What, do you have a what, what's the dollar figure on what we haven't been collecting annually? Do, do you know? I mean, is so there? It's not collected. Yeah. Um, Lou, unfortunately, I don't have the answer to that. But my staff was bringing to me the information that every now and then they were coming across applications that were uh, building permit applications that were received mm -hmm. and then issued without process of receiving the payment for it. And the estimated for that is about 10 uh, applications since I started four months ago. And they started tracking and we have the record of two since they start record. For those two that they wrote down, it's about, do you remember Rebecca? It's about six, ten thousand dollars maybe that we didn't collect. It's about ten thousand on those two. Ten thousand dollars in a matter of months or no, no, on two applications. We didn't collect okay. the fees, but we should burn it. Okay. <clears throat> uh, we found a few items that were not processed, but that is under investigation as well. I believe, Jerry, you probably have those items, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> and maybe Augie does as well, right, Augie? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, that's great. <laughs> All right, so there are a few very great things that we can celebrate. I know it was a lot to process, but the backlog is making probably everybody's life easier, less complaints. We are able to handle the anger, the valid anger from people who wanted to do their renovations in a much, much better scenario. And we probably receive less complaints. Less. 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 We're not there yet, but less. <laughs> not none. <laughs> not none. <laughs> well, because we still see. Um, a load of emails every day. We can't get back to all the emails. We can't get back to all the phone calls. Um, an example to that was a case in court, a case in court this past week, where the attorney said, the building department never replied to my emails. They are neglecting me. You know who I'm talking about. And yeah. I asked our village for security if I could address the court because it doesn't mean that I'm neglecting them because they didn't answer an email. I am with the building department seven, uh, five days of the week during the business hours. If they want to go there, I'm there to talk to them or a phone call if they can schedule a meeting. But they try to say to the judge that I'm neglecting them just because I didn't answer to an email. We still receive loads of emails and we have a lot of paperwork to deal with and lots of meetings. That we have to attend with applicants and go through all of these questions and make sure we're doing the right thing. So there are only so many hours in a day, even when you work five months in four. <laughs> and, and the five months in four doesn't even address your ongoing training requirements. Oh, that's right. Um, and you know, one of the things that uh, uh, both Carolina and Gino will be working on is becoming certified floodplain managers, which will help with our, you know, our ability to implement our floodplain damage prevention law, and also assist with the community rating system scoring. So that's uh, a lot of ongoing training, and we multiply one building inspector, two assistant building inspectors, the code report for an assistant building inspector. Uh, the the need to train and the availability to train is stretched in sometimes. So. It's, it's a major imperative for the, for the department. I'm glad you brought that up, Dan. Thank you. Ethnicity training. Ethnicity training, that's mm -hmm. that too. So the building department is transitioning <clears throat> from the regular ethnicity. We use, I believe it's number three, the version. We go into version number five. So we will be out of operation for three and a half, three hours where the entire staff is going to go in the training. Um, and by the way, when I'm out in training with Gino, I heard them, you're going to be the acting good inspector. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes. Am I right, Jerry? Guess who decided that, Dan? Uh, I'm assuming it is my boss. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, so yeah. I didn't I didn't tell the staff yet, so now they know <laughs> for that week. Um, so I'm gonna tell our department tomorrow about that. And it's coming up. It's in two weeks that we're gonna be emerging in a big training session, which is gonna be interesting. Our community needs our knowledge on that topic, definitely. We'll do our best. And it's this is for the flood plan, not for flood, the flood plan. Yes. Um, what else? I can tell you that uh, everything I know, I'm working really hard to figure out without them. Uh, when James was working, I brought him directly to my office. So his desk is now inside my office. He didn't have a lot of experience in the uh, government work or with the department. So everything that I know, I'm trying to share with James. And I told James, I said, James, when you're done with this training, my goal is for you to train someone else, but you train someone else. So two people will be able to train another two, and that makes four of us. And front desk, I is right now Karen and Rebecca who are here. I told them, I remember when I first started, Dennis Drogan, who's um, out for the past two weeks, he said, what is the policy in your office? Your door is open all the time. You need privacy. I said, my door is always open. You're going to be interrupted too many times. I said, yeah, but we have too much stuff that needs answers. So Rebecca and Karen are here, and they can tell that it's the truth. As you need, I'm always available, right? Always. So door is always open. I get interrupted probably 100 times a day, and I don't mind that at all. Right, Adrena? Exactly. And Adrena was complaining about the door sign that I had when I first started. She said, you look really ugly. So first thing she did was to have a sign made with my name, the building inspector for the door, which was very nice. So Adrena also told me she enjoys the staff meetings. She was in a management position before, correct, Adrena? Yes. And she was appreciating the opportunity we had to share all the issues we were facing during the week and how we were overcoming that or addressing things in the most more cohesive and consistent way. Um, wow, he spoke too much today. No. I appreciate it. You, you talked about the reduction in the number of complaints. You have a, 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 ta <clears throat> a tally of, of, of the number of complaints that were received and you are receiving now and uh, we get at a baseline we could use to compare them going forward. Well, that's a great question. And one of the goals we have, I mean, it's almost we are mapping the issues that we are finding. That is one of the zoning districts of the issues we are finding. But that is right now the volume of calls we are receiving and the volume of emails that I'm receiving. It removes. Is, so is there a log number, of them, a number kept anywhere? or? But my guesstimate would be 50% less at a minimum. Am I right? That's yeah, complaint? Sure, but it's impossible to tell. It, it yeah. is. All right. Yeah. I, just, I, I, I can tell you, I, I, let's come up to the manager's office. They had maybe two complaints, one of which was a self inflicted issue. Yep. He's right. I haven't. Very, been feels, very few come up in the past few months. Very few have come up to our level, Dan. I think there's right. there been. Real issues and the self-inflicted issues. Yeah, issues. yeah. I was just tend to be more self-inflicted. I was just wondering if we could get from anecdotal to to uh, some data on it. I think I can give an example to illustrate the situation. A few staff members came to me and said, "Carolina, why are you doing so much work? Why are you getting too much for yourself?" I said, "I'm trying to protect the department because the lack of plan examination skills that I found." through the things that I saw through before I started is huge. So what mm -hmm. I'm trying to do is to see, to understand what everyone is capable of doing. And then I either teach you and you see next to me and we do it together, or I'll do it by myself or we send it to a consultant. So I believe that is the picture that we're painting when we say we reduce the complaints because things were approved in a very accurate way where we are making sure that whatever is out the door was paid attention, was 
truly inspected, truly reviewed. And, and primarily the complaints up to this point have been about the, the delay, the speed of the process? Delay or people foiling because my neighbor is doing something that doesn't belong or this is not as per plans. What is happening? They didn't have flood management review or this is too tall or this is too close to the property line or what was approved? This doesn't match the school. So right now, for example, we are not releasing any building permit until we have a licensed electrician to come over and file for the job mm -hmm. or plumber, Westchester County. We also check in randomly for the license numbers to make sure that whoever comes in is a real person. We check in for dates on insurance. The other day, a good example, we had a plumber who has been working with the village for 25 years. He had his son saying, let us please start this work. We've been working with the village for so long. Mm -hmm. Look what you're asking. He didn't have an updated what was insurance, insurance, insurance disability, license. license, any of that. I said, I looked into their eyes and I said, look what you're asking me. You're asking me to put my job at risk to help you expedite a project and in front of all of my staff members here. So I can't do that, unfortunately. So it's not that I am delaying your work or not being flexible. What I'm trying to do is to ensure, especially if it included trenching and we had someone dying mm -hmm. in a situation like that, right, Jerry? Mm -hmm. So I, I told this applicant, this plumber, I said, you asking me for something that mm -hmm. I can't do and I'm so sorry about it because it's not me, it's the way the code reads and it, it is for the village safety as well. We are additional insurance. Uh, mm -hmm. Additionally, sure, in your, all of those documents. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, it's Carolina's signature <clears throat> on the certificates of occupancy, the certificates of completeness, and that signature is saying, "I reviewed everything. It's compliant with the New York State Building Code. It is a safe place to live, a safe place to habitate, or a safe place to congregate." And that's an awesome responsibility. I, I, that may be among the most awesome responsibilities that any one employee of this village has. You, you, got, you have to cross your T's, dot your I's, and sometimes do that twice. <laughs> so we, we we may not be dealing with a complaint number. You may get you may get different types of complaints this time next year, right? Yes. That's correct. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mayor, the board, and yeah. if you guys allow me, is it okay if I invite? Uh, Karen, to talk a little bit about all of these applications that the change she has seen, that she's processing a lot. Oh, wow. Is it okay? Okay, with Karen. I don't want to put you on the spot. You're, you're, putting, you're putting me on the spot. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> but it is what it is. Um, there's just so much more organization and everything is clear. There's nothing vague, it's specific, we can communicate clearly to applicants, um, we receive, we can process faster, because um, I, anything in particular you want me to focus on? We check everything now. Oh, everything is checked, absolutely. And uh, Karen is even able to identify what things are missing. And if I miss something, I do cross check. There's so there are so many elements involved that one person alone can't make sure everything is checked off. So it's different, more multiple sets of eyes. It gets we we check what's missing. We fill in what's missing. So nothing gets processed unless it's complete. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. Thank you. Uh, Rebecca, would you like to add more? Mm -hmm. Karen pretty much summed it up. Um, uh, all right, that's good. Thank you. Would, would you like to say something about the meetings? Mm -hmm. you no, know, I just think as um, a former office manager for Pace University, um, I understand a lot of staff does not, when you're not used to having, when you're not used to having weekly staff meetings, a lot of people 
there's been some pushback about it. We don't think it's necessary. But having been an office manager, I understand that it is absolutely necessary to make sure that everybody is moving in the same direction and all of the um, missing pieces are being linked together, you know, missing pieces when we sit down and talk together as a staff in one, a, you know, at one particular time and to have a set time and really stick to that set time. And that's what um, Carolina has brought to this table um, in the months that she's been, been here, in the four months, working five months, in the four months um, that she has been you know, um, so that piece alone has made a major, major difference in this working um, atmosphere. Let me ask you, you you, uh, you dealt with the public before Carolina got there, am I correct? Yes, what actually I was here. I have, been, I have been here, I started here in June of 2021 mm -hmm. as a temp from the uh, Randstad temp agency. Mm -hmm. And so I was here before Carolina. And, um, you know, so I know some of the people that were here before, before then, since 2021. Are, are, are you more confident uh, in the answers you give to the public now, uh, now as opposed to uh, before? Well, I am, I am, but um, now that doesn't, I don't think necessarily means because of Carolina as much as um because I'm in the planning department. Uh -huh. And so there was a different uh department head, I guess you want to call it, when I first started here. So I have learned so much under Brittany O'Neill, um, who's my direct supervisor. Mm -hmm. Um just because Brittany is teaching me more. So yes, I am more confident now than I ever was before. Okay. Um, Thank you. When I first started. Thank you. Thank you. James, thank you, Adrian. Would you like to give us an example of how we improved with planning submissions or inspection? Yes. Give us an example of inspection, please, for the check or sector. One, this is all new to me. Um, constructive background. Uh, I started in November with Carolina came in. Can you just uh, the mic up a little bit? Is it better? Yeah. Yeah, and everything's working right next door. It's very thorough. Everything's to the book. Yeah, I mean, specifically. Yes, tell the board that when we went for an inspection, it was the foundation. Oh, the foundation inspection. So the set, there was a setback issue on the foundation. We went to the site, took out the tape measure. Anyway, it was <laughs> learning, so. Thank you, James. Can't oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, James. Well, what happened is that inspection can be tricky. We had an addition. Imagine if you go to that inspection. And the addition is within the setback that is allowed. That's what we did. So we were trying to, I'm sorry, Jason. <laughs> so we were trying to verify if the setback was within what was approved by the board. So we wouldn't need a variance from the zoning board. So when we got there, it was two and a half feet within a setback. We were able to prevent that during the inspection. But that was one of the things that. If James was not under training, he would never know that, correct, James? So he appreciated that opportunity to learn that. So that was number one. Then we looked at drainage on that foot, foot the pools, right? So there was nothing. Or the form. If you had pits of wood on both sides, we didn't have that. So during that inspection, James had the opportunity to see that sometimes the contractors are feeding from our knowledge as well. And I discussed that with Gino as well. I said, Gino, can you believe we went for footings inspection and we didn't have wood on both sides? 
of the thing. He said, I can't believe I said, yeah. And then I spoke to Frank about it. Frank said, oh yeah, that's a common thing in America. I said, but oh, Frank, how are they gonna be stable? We gotta move on to Gino, I'm sorry. And thank okay. you for a very thorough presentation. And uh, thank you for the progress that's been happening in the building. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Carolina. My pleasure. And everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks all for coming. Thank you, Kimia. Thank you. You know, you have slides? I do, but I'll keep it brief there. If you want no, to no, no, no. Take, <laughs> take the time you need. Take the time you need, my friend. Yeah, no I don't have anybody here with me. <laughs> Can you borrow someone? Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Board, uh, Jerry and Dan. I'm going to present to you the engineering department, and you can go through the numbers as you like, but I want to give you a brief outline of what the engineering department does, what I've done since I've been here, and what the plan in the next fiscal year. Um, so, hello. Okay. Okay. A little about myself. I graduated in Manhattan College in 1995 with a bachelor's in civil engineering, and I pursued a master's uh, in uh, 1997. I uh, worked with Malcolm Carney for eight years in their geotechnical investigations and dam division, and I spent the last 18 years before coming to the village of Maranek with Con Edison. Uh, so my first slide, you can see right now the engineering department is me. Uh, I do have in my budget, uh, an assistant village engineer has been budgeted for nine months out of the fiscal year. And I do have coming aboard this summer, a uh, college intern who has just completed his second year at Illinois University in civil engineering. So what are the responsibilities of the engineer? Well, we maintain the integrity of the sanitary sewer systems and the stormwater domain system and make improvements and upgrades uh, as warranted. We maintain and upkeep the roadways and bridges throughout the village. We maintain and where necessary improve upon the sidewalks and curbs in the village limits. And when special projects come up, and we could talk about that later, uh, we evaluate the project, or I'll evaluate the project, prepare scope of work, solicit the, solicit the services of an engineering consultant if needed, uh, supervise consultants, prepare plans and specifications for each project, uh, evaluate the bids, and again, where needed, either perform the construction services in-house or let the consultant take care of it. And finally, any uh, conduct any special studies uh, on the village infrastructure. Next slide. Am I on the right slide? You're on the right one. <laughs> Thanks. Sanitary uh, sewer and stormwater commands uh, system. So, complying with the order and consent with the New York State DEC to eliminate sanitary sewer overflows, and as per the agreement with Save the Sound, Arcadis was retained to conduct an inflow and infiltration investigation throughout the village. The uh, sanitary sewer system was evaluated in four immediate areas. Basically, what they did was they broke up the section to some more manageable sections uh, the West Basin the meter eight, 13 areas, 11 and 14, and seven, nine, and 10. Uh, the INI was performed in each of the four areas, and it consisted of smoke testing to identify any illicit discharges in the sanitary sewer system. The uh, CCTV was used to inspect all the buried piping. And finally, individual manholes were inspected to assess the condition. Once the investigations were complete, recommendations for repairs were made, and they consisted of either slip lining, replacements of entire sections of pipe, which was just completed on Madison. Now it's going to be on Center Avenue right now. Uh, chimney repairs were, were re recommended. And uh, so what repairs? Uh, manhole chimney repairs. Oh, chimney repairs. Okay. The entire manhole was either uh, could be resealed if there was any leaks or anything to prevent anything from leaking out. Uh, and then I'm working with code enforcement mm -hmm. officer to uh, correct any illicit discharges uh, into our sanitary system. Right? Uh, so we're entering the last of the metered areas, the seven, nine, and 10. Concurrent with that, as part of the CMOM, the village has developed an annual sewer inspection and repair program uh, to include cleaning, 
and inspecting 10% of the village sanitary sewer system per year. Uh, there's 245,000 linear feet of sanitary sewer system in a village. So we are going to be doing 25,000 linear feet of inspections uh, and manholes uh, along those routes per year. Um, that's gonna consist of, again, cleaning. We're gonna utilize the town of the Maranek sewer truck that we own concurrently with them to inspect it. Uh, we're gonna do individual manhole inspections and then Arcadis is gonna prepare a summary report and we can make any repairs necessary. Uh, this is where the village engineer, the assistant village engineer is gonna come in. My plan is to within three years, take that work and keep it in house from Arcadis. Uh, it, their proposal for just the first year is approximately $100,000. If we can keep that work in house, yeah, that's a positive. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. And similarly, the stormwater command system. As you know, Mayor, board, I brought before you a couple of projects that are approved right now. One is on Florence Street. We have a consultant right now designing improvements to uh, damage an undersized section of drain pipe on Florence Street. Uh, Ralph and Gertrude Avenue, we just had that video from the culverts at the corner of Ralph and Gertrude all the way to the Avalon. We found 200 linear feet of corrugated metal piping uh, half blocked with silt and causing backup. So we're gonna be replacing those this summer. Uh, that by the way, is going to be done concurrently with a sidewalk project, the CDBG project. So instead of having two contractors on site, we'll have one contractor doing both both jobs. Sidewalk and sewers. And so well, again, it's great. It'll be done in the summertime. School is out. By the end of August, everything will be buttoned up. New roadway, new sidewalks, new drainage. And this is that uh, Ralph and Gertrude? That's going to be from Ralph and Gertrude. The this, this sidewalk project will extend down to Mamaronic Avenue, but the stormwater upgrades is going to be going from that culvert all the way down to Elliott Avenue. So this is storm or, or sanitary? That's storm. storm. Okay, yeah, yeah. They, they're doing a sanitary on that block too, right? Mm -hmm. Sanitary is complete, man. Right it's at the done. end of the year, that was the first. But, it, uh, but the sidewalk and storm will be worked. Oh, we did. Okay. <clears throat> right. And then the last one is uh, Wooden Jefferson. Uh, that's going to be another uh, upgrade to our existing sanitary sewer system. Any comment? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and that that um that uh, that sewer blockage there that that's kind of a, a flood mitigation measure. Yes. Yeah. Yes, uh, I think that's going to be covered under FEMA, right? Yeah, the, the repair work on uh, Ralph and Gertrude is a FEMA project. So we're combining the CDB project and the FEMA work, get it done by one contractor. Combining the bid. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. and we've been working uh, closely with Westchester County to make sure that uh, they have everything they need because they're going to be very good specification. Okay, so roads and bridges, um, approximately 45 miles of roadway in the village of in the village of America. Um, the last paving that was performed in the village prior to Halstead Avenue recently was back in 2015. The previous engineer had paved approximately four miles of road at a cost of around three million dollars. Uh, before that, I think uh, speaking with uh, DPW General Foreman. I uh, mentioned there was the last project before that was around 2014. Mm -hmm. So really our roads haven't been paved in nearly nine years, exception of nine, well, which four miles of road. But this summer, my intention is to piggyback off of the Scarsdale contract, just like I did with the Halstead Avenue, and hopefully get five miles of paving done uh, on some of the most deteriorated roads in the village, uh, leaving approximately 39 miles of road still needing to be evaluated. Uh, and that's where I wanna bring in a pavement management study to be performed. Um, some consultants, they can come in and what they'll do is actually ride each, each road, video it, evaluate it, and uh, uh, grade each, each, each piece of roadway and give it a grade based on you know, the, how bad it is. That will determine what gets paid first based on the condition. And that is a continuous uh, system that'll be upgraded. Once it's done, we could always upgrade it. Those roads will be checked off. 
those re recently paved roads can have a lifespan of between 10 to 15 years. Some can go a little longer. If you live on a small cul-de-sac, it's not traveled as much. A Holstead Avenue, maybe a little less, maybe 10 to 12 years. But that pavement management system really gives us a great tool to see where we're at right now and where we're going in the future. And it kind of maximizes, it stretches our dollar. I, I want to thank you for that because we've been talking about that since I've been on the board, about, about having that and then having kind of a, a, a payment, like a pavement a paving schedule. So you do X amount Correct. every year. So it never gets to the point where we did so much right before the pandemic. I mean, based on the average, let's say 10 year average re, 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 renewing a uh, uh, pavement needs to be done every 10 years, 45 miles, or you're talking four and a half miles, maybe a little more between three and a half to four miles a year is, is reasonable. And that's for grinding? That's going to be uh, correct, milling and paving. Uh, bridges, uh, 13 bridges within the village. Uh, the village performs maintenance on all 13 bridges. Uh, Maybe the MTA bridges? What's that? The MTA bridges you talk about? The local bridges. The local bridges. The local bridges. Okay. Right. Yeah. So the uh, daily maintenance is uh, snow plowing, street cleaning, leaf removal, uh, installation of signs, striping. Uh, as you go down now to the more general maintenance, we're talking about puddle repair, repair railings. Uh, that is eight of the 13 bridges. I'm sorry you can't tell, but the second slide over, you can see the village of Mamaronek is in the middle. Okay, so we're performing, and I can send this to you mm -hmm. if you have a better look and interpretation. We're, we're, we're going to be performing that maintenance on eight of the bridges. Uh, and where the really big ticket item is, is the bridge maintenance, the full maintenance, the bottom slide. That is repaving surfaces, replacing surfaces, uh, sidewalks and shoulders, but it's also responsibility for the superstructure of the bridge and the actual bridge, the foundation and the superstructure of the bridge. So you could see, it, well, you can't see, <laughs> I'll explain it to you. Uh, Jefferson and Hillside are the top two. Go back already. So in the center column, where it's in green, Jefferson and Hillside, brand new. Okay, we share those responsibilities with Town Town of Rye. Uh, Short Street will be new. We have a proposal out with uh, Bridge New York, a yeah. grant for Bridge New York. Yeah, we, we've applied for a Bridge New York grant uh, to rehab that structure. Uh, we will probably look at that based on uh, the uh, report that the DEC is doing for Beaver mm -hmm. Swamp Court Committee to make some additional suggestions. For uh, various structures along that that, uh, that river. So, with the Army Corps doing Ward's Avenue Bridge and uh, us doing Tompkins Bridge, within four years, we'll have five brand new bridges. So, um, <laughs> I told you, you know, my favorite uh, statistic is right now in the village there are five bridges in various stages of design or construction. Uh, and those five bridge replacements are being undertaken by five different agencies. Mm -hmm. We have the DOT with Post Road, the Town of Marinette with Waverly Avenue Bridge, the Town of Rye with Otter Creek Bridge, the Village with Tompkins, and the Army Corps with uh, Ward Avenue. So five bridges, five different agencies. Makes all the sense in the world. Yeah. Only in government. All right, next slide, Ogie. Okay, so, uh, page. Oh, sidewalks and curbs, yes. So again, this summer, like I said before, with Ralph and Gertrude, we're gonna be doing phase one of the uh, CDBG project on uh, Ralph and Gertrude from Maranek Avenue all the way to Elliott. Uh, summer of 2025, we'll begin uh, phase two and three. Um, Allstead Avenue is in is in the uh, in the works right now. It's going to be a replacement of 7,500 linear feet of sidewalk with new curbing bump outs for enhanced pedestrian safety along the entire corridor. Uh, that we received approximately four million dollars uh, in state uh, in tap grants from the state. Uh, so that is looking to be done around 2024, 2025. Hopefully, <laughs> the, the the state DOT will. <laughs> While I'm going through this, please ask any questions if you have any other projects that I have maybe not brought up. 
I'll be more than happy to answer. Um, uh, uh, so with that also, we have uh, Old Post Road in Orienta. That's another major project uh, for sidewalk improvements. Uh, right now, we do have a proposal from our consultant, but we are waiting for him to add the stormwater uh, portion of it. Because, uh, you know, as that area right by the uh, village green condos, there is a, a, a large amount of flooding that, that occurs in that area under intense storms. Uh, and then again, also another area where we're looking to do uh, additional sidewalk for safety improvements is uh, Rockland Avenue. Uh, uh, special construction projects. So start with the transfer station. Um, the older transfer station roof uh, that covered the compactor uh, was deemed structurally uh, uh, deficient by the previous village engineer and subsequently was demolished. However, no plan was put back into place to cover the, the compactor. Uh, Working closely with James, your or general form for DPW, uh, he mentioned that that's a piece of equipment that really should be kept exposed to the elements. So we retain the services of Kelly Sessions as a site engineer, uh, Grossfield Macri as a structural engineer, uh, studio architecture, and Spinelli surveying to redesign a new steel butler building that will serve two purposes: one, to cover the compactor, keep it indoors and to, uh, to provide additional parking for DPW vehicles uh, over the ramp. Uh, my favorite, the West Basin Seawall. Uh, when I got here, <laughs> I could see <laughs> at low tide, that photo was taken uh, early in October and it was in imminent danger of collapse. Given the proximity of the uh, Coast Guard building and the police marine unit, uh, made it all the more imminent that we really protect that structure and replace the wall. Uh, rather than sub out the work, again, my specialty and what I went to school for was geotechnical and foundation engineering. I was able to keep the work in house. I know that there was a proposal out that uh, an engineering consultant designed the wall. We were able to save that money. And then I conducted the oversight and um, working uh, various hours. I have some photos where I was out there at three o'clock in the morning because we wanted to work with the low tide. Uh, we were able to uh, repair the wall and uh, 120 linear feet of wall was completed in about two months. Came out very well. Uh, and then our dredging project. Uh, update on that. Um, Spinelli surveying right now is out conducting their bathymetric surveys within 200 feet of each bridge and crossing and culvert. Um, once they're done, and currently GEI is doing the paperwork to apply for those nationwide three and general permits from the DEC. So once the survey is done, a couple of days, they'll be able to get their sections and submit it to the state. And they promised, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and DEP promised us a quick turnaround to, uh, to get the GP and the uh, nationwide three permit. So we could really concentrate on those larger areas and get a lot of that to put out. Are we, doing, are we doing anything right now? We're clearing some debris that we were able to, anything that fell in, any trees, any mm -hmm. uh, anything that's kind of potentially blocking things. And as a matter of fact, we did have a, we attended Dan and I a pretty big meeting for the Waverly Avenue Bridge. And at that meeting, they were asking us, can we remove some of the trees? I'm like, hey, you can actually remove them. You'd be doing us a favor. Yeah, <laughs> right. Got some more, some more uh, you know, Sorry, looking trees in that area. You're over by Plaza Avenue over there. Yeah. Yeah, we won't create any obstacles. <laughs> and last slide, Dan. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay. Apologies. He doesn't want to be here. It's, it's, it's not, not that good looking. <laughs> uh, any special projects that come into the village? I just happened to choose the dam at this point. Um, as you know, GHD provided us with a summary report. Uh, they completed the engineering assessment report, the emergency action plan, and the operations and maintenance manual, which now, once we submit to the DEC, will put us in compliance. However, as he stated in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the Board of Trustees meeting last week, the dam is certainly structurally stable. No question. It's hydrologically un unstable. Cannot pass the spillway design flight. And he provided us the four options 
for for consideration. Um, so anything, any special projects, it would not be the dam. Anything that comes through my uh, my office, we can certainly take a look at, evaluate to see if we can keep it in house. If not, we select the most competent consultant and send it out. Uh, last slide. A bit of a joke, but one of my favorite ones is a foundation engineer. You can see an engineer <laughs> in 13th century Italy telling the Duke, you could save 700 lira and save two months of time if you don't do any borings. <laughs> yes, they didn't do any borings because of <laughs> <All in therapy. laughs> As a geotechnical engineer, this is, you know, kind of, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for the levity. Geotechnical engineering humor. Yeah, exactly. Very good. <laughs> Um, so again, looking at my budget, I do have, uh, in there nine months for an assistant village engineer. And, uh, again, I plan to bring on a summer intern to help me with the paving and also some for some of the construction oversight and some of the upgrade, uh, drainage upgrade project. Uh, we do have uh, a reduction in our general consulting services. Uh, we're at 100,000. Um, engineering services related to Keller Lane, we're at 10,000. Uh, engineering inspections and survey at 25,000. And survey and pre bid engineering, we have a proposed uh, tentative budget for 20,000. That's for outside. That's for outside. Any questions? No, no I, 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 I'm very happy we have an engineer. Uh, happy you're here, Gino. I think the community, any community that floods the regularity of this community needs an engineer. I'm happy to be here, Mayor. Yeah. Uh, good team. I know Caroline spoke about teamwork before. Uh, Me more, you know, worked side by side with her on a couple of small. Um, we usually had some questions we work together. I also am um, very happy to be working with uh, James, the uh, EBW general foreman. Uh, you know, we have a good relationship mm -hmm. uh, where, you know, he's got his department, I have mine, but we rely on each other a lot for, for things. So for example, on that Ralph and Gertrude project, we did the video inspection in the ground. We came across some sort of structure that we couldn't figure out what it was. So, instead of getting a contractor out there to dig a test bit, which costs us three to five, six, seven thousand dollars, James said, you know, if you could hold off, I'll have my guys do it. So we you know we have a good kind of working relationship with that. What was it? <laughs> what was it? We haven't done it yet. We're doing okay. it next week. Well, it was, it, you know, now you got me wait, waiting yeah. with bated breath to find out what's on there. Know, when I super, basically what I did when we did the underground camera inspection, I sent it to the consultant. But before I sent it to him, I like to send them a drawing of showing the structures and what's there. So what I did was I superimposed the old 1939 utilities map. And you could see right where that wall structure is mm -hmm. was what used to be the old head wall to that creek that ran down from the corner of Ralph and Gertrude down mm -hmm. Elliott. So do you think that's what it is? It's possibly that they could have used that together uh, and maybe they just cast around it because when the camera focused up, all you saw on there was just deteriorated rebar and concrete. So it may, may have been that they used that old type of structure built around it. And uh, you know, the things that you kind of see when you just, I guess I've always said, pictures worth a thousand words. Cheap so, in digging it up. Yeah, so mm -hmm. exactly. They left that for us. <laughs> so, <laughs> Well, next week, we'll uh, I'll have the answer. Oh, let us know. And the um, uh, the silt in that uh, storm sewer over by um, um, by the Mason was it was it uh, Ralph and Gertrude? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is that ri river silt in there, or is that uh, it's we, the majority of it probably is? I guess is because we couldn't get the camera down those manholes uh -huh. any more than 10 feet. It was just spinning and picking up silt. Uh -huh. uh, my guess is either that there's damage below those corrugated metal pipes or the pipe bellied out a little bit. Uh -huh. uh, and it just continued to fill with silt. And right now those pipes are they're 200 linear feet or half log. So water will flow in at 350 feet. Once it hits that chamber, it just 
it just backs up and it just right to the creek and any intense storm, or I don't know the magnitude of the storm, but any major storm, it's not, it's just limiting the, the, the capacity of that pipe. And it's, it's a shame because beyond that section, we have a 54 inch pipe going up to mm -hmm. New Street and a 60 inch pipe going through the Avalon and out to. So it's, it, it's, it's preventing river. water from being moved out. It's preventing anything from being moved out. And I think it's years, you know, centuries ago that there was a stream that ran through the alley. Yes, no, oh. I found an old map that actually yeah. showed the river extended right to New Street. The map, mm -hmm. it probably yeah. did go down. It was a small tributary to the Mamaronic River, mm -hmm. uh, but the map didn't extend that far. Let's see, looking, see if it does. Yeah. But yeah, more, more than likely, those, uh, those little tributaries were backfilled in in order for development to go. Yeah. They, mm -hmm. they put the road through it. Same thing happened on Wooden Jefferson here. Yep. You know, uh, Pre-1970. What's that? Pre-1970. Pre oh, yeah. Yeah, the old ponds. On, on the corner of uh, where Stetson Realty used to be. Mm -hmm. uh, when I walked the area with SLR engineering before they were announcing the Beaver Swamp Brook mm -hmm. uh, flood study kickoff, uh, I took them to the Continental Footbridge, uh, took them to the culvert, and took them up through Shore, Shore Street and then to the Rhinac High School where they had the railroad bridge, mm -hmm. all identified on their kickoff meeting as kind of stop lots for water capacity. When I sent them some information, I looked up some old maps, uh, and I could send them to you as well, too. I had a map prior to all those subdivisions being cut in. Yeah. It showed a pond mm -hmm. right yep. where Toyota City used to be, and there was a spillway. Mm -hmm. So I found another map also. I believe this is where Taylor's name got his name. It was Taylor Lumber. It might have been, could have been a lumber yard. It could have been a lumber mill and back in the 1890s. That little shopping center um, on the corner of... Post Road and um, I don't know what the what, near CVS Killer, yeah, 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 the Killer yeah. is um, was yes, before sir. the shopping center was built. There was an old building there, a house that yeah. was the mill house, and you could see the vestiges in the basement. It, yeah. So that was you know, yeah. and that building was built in the early eighties, but it was that that was the mill site. Yeah, so the spill and the spillway is. Piece of the spillway is still there. There's a piece of if you walk by the sewer, by the, the sidewalk, and look over, mm -hmm. you could see a piece of steel just crossing, connecting the two retaining walls. Looks like it was an old spillway in that area, or maybe a section of what was. Spilled. It's amazing how much this this area, in, you know, the whole metropolitan area, is landfill and and filled it. You know, when I was growing up. The church that we went to was on Twenty First Street and Tenth Avenue, and it was on the west side of Tenth Avenue. And in the basement of the church, there were two big sump pumps. Mm -hmm. And every once in a while, they would fail. And they would call my father because my father was very handy. My father would come down and fix them. And I remember saying to my father, why do they need sump pumps there? And my father said, because that's where the river used to stop. Yeah. The river used to stop on 10th Avenue. Mm -hmm. so everything from 10th Avenue to 12th Avenue in Manhattan is all landfill. Yeah. And if you look at an old map of Manhattan, it's a, it's a lot thinner and a, you know, it doesn't extend as far into the harbor. And uh, on the riverside, it's, it's you know, probably a quarter of a mile. Yeah. And Manhattan is all landfill. That yeah. was when you could make new land. Can't do that, yeah. anymore. Can't do that anymore. God knows what's in there. I do have, uh, I have to find it. One of my professors, uh, when I was in Manhattan, I did it. Uh, had a map uh, of the map. I guess it was the, I guess the creator, his name is Bailey. Oh, it showed Manhattan. Yeah, I've seen it. You've seen that before? Yeah, yeah. If you go up north, there was a series of islands. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Inwood is the only part of Manhattan that's not, and that is Manhattan. Yep. It's part of the Bronx. It was filled in by the Army Corps of Engineers, but it was a series of islands up uh, in that area by 225th by the Broadway Bridge. Right, right. Yeah. By Inwood, in Inwood Hill Park yeah. is the last, last untouched uh, forest in Manhattan. That's right. Wow, <laughs> history lesson. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Actually. It's, yeah. yeah. Uh, anything else for us, buddy? That's it. Thank you. Thank well, good you. job. That yeah. was very good, Gino. And uh, thank you for being here and fitting in with the crew. Oh, yeah. happy to be here. Thank you.
it seems like you, you're one of those guys that seems like you've been here forever. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I live here, like I said, I'm a resident and I uh, really care about the- uh, I know you do. Uh, Gino, I'm sorry to me. I do have to talk to you and Augie about your three o'clock espresso habit that we oh. need to talk about. So. <laughs> <laughs> you're not invited to it? <laughs> <laughs> hey, as long as it's espresso. No, that's right. That's right. Jerry, I love this guy. He's got his own express, espresso machine that he brings in. <laughs> that's what he said, Augie. <laughs> Plenty of it. Okay. Thank you. Good job. Really good job. Excellent. We got some coffee aficionados. I know Cliff grinds his own beans. Yes. He makes his own cake yeah. cups. Oh, he, wow. yeah, he pays it yeah, I make my own cake cups. I don't, I don't grind them. Oh, he, he's got a whole grinder. I sort of grind it. <laughs> All right, uh, Jerry, you have anything to add? Uh, no, Mayor. Everything is uh, um, really good. Went, went really well with our two newest department heads, and then uh, we will reconvene uh, very soon next week, I guess. Yeah, what is it, Tuesday? Uh, yep. Tuesday is our next one, yes. Yeah. Okay, Dokey. No, well, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to judge Monday. by the sun where exactly you are. It's a, you're, you're pretty, you're west, aren't you? West, yeah, I'm in the um, I'm in the Witsack capital of the world. What? Witsack. Witsack. Witness Protection Program. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, next day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in I'm in Arizona at my cousin's house. Okay. Yeah. And you're um, outside. I'm outside. Yeah, it's it's uh it's not even five o'clock here. It's four four oh seven right now. Wow, good for you. Yeah, thanks. I'll be home soon. All right, um, guys. Thank you very much. We'll see you we'll see you Monday night for regular meeting, and then and then the rest of the week is all about the budget. every night next week. Whew. And the budget committee is meeting Friday night. <laughs> uh, I need a motion Thursday. to adjourn. Yeah, we'll so move. second. All in favor of adjourn. Aye. All right. Thank you all Thanks, very much. Everyone. Take Have care. Rest of your evening. So, right. Right. so uh, there's, there's, there's a great show called. called uh, there is literally uh, a river running through. The corner? Well, yeah, the world after people. Oh, the world after people. Yeah, yeah. And it, it showed uh, that everybody.